We're back out here once again, and today we're talking about an indispensable part of your winter bass fishing arsenal. That's right, we're talking all things wacky rig, and I bet I can teach you a few tricks you didn't already know. You'll like this one. Stick around. There we are. Come on, buddy. Stay down. Ooh, that's pretty good. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations! If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing, and today we're talking about a presentation that seems tailor-made for those slow, lethargic winter bass. Something that matches their attitude and their activity level almost perfectly. I am, of course, talking about a wacky rig. Now, I've done plenty of wacky rig videos on this channel before, that's true, but I've never done one quite like this. In this video, I'm going to assemble everything that I know about winter wacky rig fishing, including where I'm fishing them, why I'm fishing them there, and some tricks and hacks that I'm sure you're going to like. So let's go ahead and start with this guy right here, just a regular old wacky rig. And these things are amazing particularly in the winter. You remember the last video that we talked about, we talked about the different zones of fishing, right? Zone one, out deep, zone two, intermediate, zone three, up shallow, beating the bank. Now, these are definitely a zone three type of bait because they take so long to reach the bottom. And that is their appeal. That's what makes them so effective and so attractive to those fish. There are so many different things that we can do with that, though. Just because we're beating the bank with it, that doesn't mean we're limited in how we can present that bait. You know, first thing that you need to take note of is nothing skips better than a wacky rig. If you are learning how to skip a bait, if, if something that you want to learn how to do, a wacky rig is going to do that job. It will teach you how to skip a bait. And learning to skip on a spinning reel, which is something that I started to do way back when, you know, it's a gentle hand. You're not going to backlash. You're not going to get frustrated. And you'll learn that same skipping motion that works on a bait cast reel. It works on a level wind reel. It works on a Zebco. Skipping is skipping is skipping, right? It's like tossing a rock sideways. The rod motion is the same every single time. So that's what I recommend. But I'm using that skipping action to put that worm in places that I need to put it. One thing about a wacky rig is you are going to be making targeted casts. That's, you know, going to have to work on your casting accuracy. And a wacky rig is great for that. It teaches you skipping and it's going to teach you casting accuracy. Plus, it's also going to try your patience because of that slow flutter you know as as it flaps down on the way down that distinctive wacky rig motion that is so appealing to those fish it doesn't matter you know if it's under flooded brush it doesn't matter if it's under docks it doesn't matter if you're along riprap banks you know anywhere along the bank a wacky rig is generally going to be one of your top presentations to use when it comes to getting bites, especially on those tougher, you know, those tougher days when those bass are more lethargic. But a thing about a wacky rig though, like I said, it, it can be limited in some aspects because it tends to not be very weedless. You will get hung up on it. If you're trying to skip under flooded brush, you know, Sometimes there's going to be some brush under the water. A lot of times there's going to be brush under the water that you don't see. That's going to be holding bass. Well, you'll get hung up in that and you'll end up losing your worm. You know, you can get hung up on dock pilings. You can get hung up on other pieces of structure such as rocks or whatever. And that's kind of a detraction of a wacky rig. They're still good enough to use and you got away, you know, losing a worm and a hook. Is that worth it? But there are options, and we're going to talk about some of those options. Such as, you know, this guy right here. You guys have heard me beat this horse into the ground. 
you recognize this as a Waco rig. One on EWG, I've got a 1 16th ounce nail weight in here, you know, and just pushed in there. That's all I've done. And this has very similar action under the water as a regular wacky rig. When it's going down, because it's middle weighted, it has a flutter on that fall. It's amazing how much it resembles a wacky rig. And on the fall is when we're getting those different types of bites. You know, whenever it comes to a wacky style presentation, that flutter, that shimmy on the fall, that's the whole thing. Now, when we twitch it back up, you know, that worm will kind of do like that, you know, and then spread out and flutter again. This looks different when you pop it. This almost resembles a fluke as it'll dart side to side and then flutter down. So it's got some differences, but they are no less appealing, especially when you've got this rig right. It can be just as effective as a wacky rig. But the thing about this, what makes it so appealing and why I like using it so much, it's 100% as weedless as a Texas rig. This thing is weedless. So I can skip it into those flooded brush piles. I can skip it into that heavy vegetation. And unlike a wacky rig, which is going to get gummed up or I might get hung up, this will come back to me, which is why I've been beating it around so much, which is why I've been fishing it so aggressively. It's something that I keep tied on whenever I need to slow things down and I need to fish some thick, heavy vegetation or some heavy structure. I can get this in there very nicely and get very similar results. So, you know, like I said, there are options to fishing that wacky rig. You don't have to do it just that one way. Some guys will take something like this right here, you know, just a 3 16 ounce shaky head, and they'll wacky rig a worm on that. It gives them that weight, and they can fish this in that intermediate zone two we talked about, that little bit of intermediate water, and this will pull that worm down, and it will allow you to fish some deeper water. It'll give you more of a fall. You know, you can actually even fish this a little bit more shallow if you want to, if you're just looking to get that deeper fall. But again, this has the same failings as a regular wacky rig in the fact that it's not nearly weedless. This will definitely find the gunk and it'll live there, you know. And since it's heavier, a lot of times it will get hung up even more severely, more stubbornly, and you'll end up losing a perfectly good shaky head. But there is a remedy to that as well. And that's where this guy comes in. And you've seen me fish this. You know, guys who've been around the channel for a long time will recognize this as the stupid rig or, you know, as I call it, the wacky jig. And it's just a bitsy bug, or in this case, a bitsy flip jig. I've taken the skirt off. And you see that brush guard, that makes all the difference. I can fish this around some really thick flooded timber, around rock piles, and I'll get it back. You know, I'm not nearly as prone to get this hung up. And it still falls fairly slowly. It's not like it's rocketing down. You know, it still falls pretty slowly on the way down. So I still get that enticing wacky rig style, but I'm able to fish this in way more sloppy areas and I can fish it a little bit deeper. I can fish it in that zone two intermediate range. And I, you know, I get that faster fall rate. So I'm not waiting a hundred years. I can actually cover just a little bit of water. It works great. And you've seen me fish it at the big lake. You've seen me fish it at the little lake. And time and again, it's one of the best producing ways of fishing a wacky rig that I have. But there's one more. For those of you who want to fish a wacky rig out deep, well, then we've got a little trick here that I learned from Matt Steffen a few years ago, and it really does work well. You can do this in any depth of water. It doesn't matter if you're fishing 50 feet of water, you can still do this and fish a wacky rig. And all you need, well, Get your barrel swivel, right? I've got a little barrel swivel here, right? And I've got it tied onto some line. I've got me a leader and you can make it as long as you want to. And on the other end, I've got something like that drop shot weight. This is just a three eighths uh, tungsten drop shot weight. And in the middle, well, I've got my wacky rig. You see how that slides? You know, it slides up and down. So all I did was thread that through. 
This is tied to my main line. I cast it out there. And then when it gets to the bottom, it just wacky rigs on down, you know, however long that leader is. And I can work it just like a regular wacky rig, you know, almost like a cross between a wacky rig and a drop shot, but it works very, very well. So you can fish a wacky rig even in the deepest waters and it works great. You don't have to wait 16, 17 years for that wacky rig to get all the way down where you want it to be. And that's what makes a wacky rig so appealing is a lot of times anglers don't realize just exactly how versatile, how useful, how productive a wacky rig really is. If I see a dock, you know, obviously I can put a Texas rig under there. I can put a jig under there. But right now in the wintertime, I'm looking for not only smaller presentations, but I'm also looking for slower presentations, things that will just sit in front of the fish as long as we can get it to sit in front of that fish. So, you know, it's like when you hang a jerk bait in the water, right? We do the twitch, twitch pause. And we've talked about having very long pauses in between whenever we're working that jerk bait again, because we want those fish to, you know, kind of key in on it, kind of react to it, kind of decide that they want to hit it. And sometimes a very long pause is exactly what you have to do, right? We've talked about using a flutter spoon. Well, even though they're three quarter ounce or ounce and a half, they still take a long time to fall because they're so flat and wide and they have so much surface area that they just spin and flutter on the way down. This is no different. A wacky rig is effective for those same exact reasons. So don't be afraid. Tie one on, right? I mean, I've got just my regular spinning setup. This is what I'm using. I've got 10 pound braid and you can even go down to something like eight pound or six pound if you're using fluorocarbon. I've got it tied to a six pound fluorocarbon leader. And this is what I'm using for the wacky jig. This is what I'm using for the Waco rig. This is what I'm using for my wacky rig. I even use this, you know, for a Naco rig, right? A Naco rig, if you're looking for that faster presentation, stick a nail weight in the end of it, and you've got a Naco rig. So you're still getting that reaction bite if that's something you want to try to. You know, it keeps those bass on their toes. Sometimes they've got it fluttering in front of their face. Sometimes it's rocketing by them because you've got a nail weight in it. And a Naco rig can also be an exceptionally effective lure presentation in the wintertime too. So there is variety. There's so much you can do just by putting a rubber band on a worm and sticking it sideways on a hook, you know, and don't be afraid to play around with it. Get inventive, right? The winter time is when I do most of my tinkering. I feel that I've got a lot more time on the water. You know, the fish aren't as active. So my mind gets to cook and my brain gets to cook. And this is when I came up with things like the Waco rig and the freak, you know, whenever I do those crazy sorts of things, but don't be afraid to experiment. Get out there on the water, play around with a wacky rig, play around with a Waco rig or the stupid jig. And I'm telling you, you will be surprised at just exactly how effective these different presentations can be, especially now that the water's cold. So there you have it. The humble wacky rig, the simple wacky rig, which as it turns out, may not be so simple. There are so many ways we can present that worm to that fish in that style. Don't be afraid to play around with it. Get out on the water, experiment with it, try some things out, and I know you'll be happy with the success. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.